Today is August 18th, and we have a new crop of voicemails to get to, so let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Recaps galore for weekly awards, stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us for a little bit. My name's Jimmy. Sitting next to me is Jake. Behind the dish, we got producer BBD, and we are coming to you live from the Roosevelt Studios here in the Bronx. That's R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. Some voicemail apps. We are recording right before the first game against the Rays, so we do not know what happened between Tanaka and Snell. Well, Well, we know the Yankees probably won 4-1 to on a Tanaka brilliant. Tanaka great, yeah. Britain gets his last save while Chapman gets a day of rest. And, you know, it's all going to be yeah. groovy. How about that? Jake, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Interested in the voicemails. BBD has prepped us to come in a little timid. Um, and I'm interested because we have had a few big conversations recently in Yankee Land, whether it's, you know, Anduar, Clint. Um, you know, there's some big moving parts that are happening around the team. That I think have led to some fire podcast episodes by myself and James. Wow! So I'm interested so to see what the people say. Uh, see if they get under our skin. I'm drinking a really weird coffee that behind the scenes Bill brought in. Um, Are you gonna get drunk? Tastes like butt. I guess they make it in whiskey barrels, so it just reeks of whiskey, but none of the side effects, which sounds kind of terrible. I don't get that. Right. Yeah, that makes sense because are you going to get drunk? I don't get it. I don't think so. I mean, what maybe if, it's like, good for alcoholics. What if it like like it doesn't get you drunk but the placebo effect gets you there because you feel like you're drinking whiskey? Do you we'll feel find drunk? Find out by the end. Okay. I mean, always a little bit naturally, but uh nothing that the coffee's influenced. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's just get right to it. We've got a lot of voicemails. Let's do it. We got some Patreons in the chat. Llewellyn, yep. an all time fave. Llewellyn. Dylan, Moisha, Eric, Chris. Thank you guys. Thanks to all the patrons. Let's, let's, let's get it. Here we go. Voicemail numero uno. Uh, hey guys, it's Aiden from the Jersey Shore calling. I uh, just found out, or I just read about the Judge IL stint. I also read John Boy's tweet on how it's just keep them healthy for the playoffs. And I wanted to ask, I think that's the right sentiment. It's like, do you think that's true for both Judge and Stanton? Or is it if this is more of a playoff crunch where it's the normal playoff format instead of the two teams, they may be on the roster instead of the IL? Um, let me know what you think. I personally think so. I think if with how the Tampa series went, I think if – this wasn't a larger playoff format they'd be playing. So let me know what you think. Thank you again. Uh, have a good one. Yeah, good call. Mm. Um, Interesting spin. Stan, no. Judge, yes. Yeah. I think if the playoffs were normal and second place in the division was a one-game wild card, yeah, you probably play Judge through. You probably don't start Hap again. Probably have him at DH today and not Anduhar. Yeah. Probably do a lot. Of, it really changed the game. It really, really changed the entire vibe of the season the moment they switched uh, to the expanded playoffs. And it's all a warm-up now. A couple moving parts there. We've we've kind of said if you, know, if you could know the foresight that DJ was going to get hurt, then they probably wouldn't have Ile Judge. That's impossible. I do think... You know, we uh, we talked about it a little bit with the old training staff how these guys do play hurt. Like, you know, Stan's first year, he played through a hamstring thing like the whole year. You know, mm-hmm. Judge played banged up his rookie year. I do think we have the new staff in now, so when Judge starts feeling something after Stanton goes down in Tampa, that it was like, whoa, yeah, I yell. 
Who mm-hmm. cares? Um, and then, yeah, you, you look a little bit dumb, you know, four days later when LeMahieu's down and Judge is at a podium saying I'm 100% healthy. But, you know, if the Yankees play Judge after taking three days off and then he pulled his calf even more or hurt anything else, you look like Gumas. Yeah. What did you say right what? there at the end? Awesome. Okay. Come at me. Uh, yeah, good call. I think I agree with you. I think uh, a lot of people didn't realize how much that playoffs changed the entire season. Still has a lasting effect. Hey, it's from Chicago again. I'm just calling because I've actually really enjoyed um, the Yankees not getting all of their runs from the home run ball. Um, I like when they don't have to live and die by the long ball. Um, when you got Talkman, LeMayu, um, Urshela, Gardner, Frazier, I mean, like, all of them putting doubles together, same with Torres, like, it's fun. I know Judge is saying to hit him a thousand feet, but um, I think it's, this, is a, this is fun baseball to watch, and it's not as stressful as watching just home run, home run, home run, or strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. Just wondering what you guys thought about that. Thanks for calling in. I'd have to look at stats because my brain tells me they're getting all their home runs from home runs. This uh, is the same exact as last season. I don't know if there's any stats on this. Know what's interesting? So I just clicked a couple. I'm on the ESPN team sort page. So the Yankees have played 22 games. So there's a couple teams ahead of them that I think are somewhat interchangeable. As of right now, the Yankees are 18th in MLB in in the MLB in strikeouts. Nice. I think that's kind of surprising, and that's a little different than past years. Uh, home runs, they are currently tied for second. And yeah, they're I, getting all their runs off home I, runs, I just would, like normal, right? It's, I mean, it's just a mindset. I mean, I, I will say this. I mean, DJ, when we added DJ, that was a clear change from the year before. Um, played at a special rate. Yeah. And, I mean, Talkman, the way he's been playing has been lefty DJ-esque, which has drawn that comparison. So I see what you're saying, but you have to realize... How many games have they played this year? It's so much more mental in your own head. 22 games. They've hit 40 home runs. Yeah, almost two a game. Math. Yeah. Um, Talkman's not hitting home runs, and DJ's doing what DJ does, but those two... That happened last year, too. This is the same Yankee offense as last year, in my opinion. And the, the scoring all your runs on home runs is still silly because unless every run you score is a solo home run, just because the double comes before the home run doesn't mean the guy didn't hit a double. Yeah. If you hit more, if you hit a home run and two other guys score, one other guy score, well, that guy didn't hit a home run to get on base. So you would have rathered the home run hit the wall and him scoring an RBI double, chugging around the bases, than scoring a home. I've never understood it. I've never understood it once. Um Yankees offense is good. They're relying on the home run the same as last year. Know who? Uh, know who's the number one team in home runs? Who? Los Angeles Dodgers. Oh, the good teams. Makes sense. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's the best true outcome you can have. But um, I do like that there's balance and that Talkman and DJ exist. So I agree with the caller there. But the Yankees are still scoring majority of the runs on home. And runs. yeah, it's I, again you psych yourself out mentally because you know. Two of Talkman's singles may seem nice, but if Talkman goes two for four with two singles and Stanton goes one for four with a home run, 99% of games you're going to want that home run. Yeah. There's not exact math there, but you guys get the concept. Also, like, DJ and Talkman, like, the threat to hit a home run is also there. So it's not like they're just not trying to hit home runs ever. They hit them. DJ LeMay, who is Talkman doesn't hit one this year. Top five in the MVP last year. Come back. Be healthy. Next. Voight leading off. That guy must hate it. Hey, guys. Andy in Minnesota. Um, just got some news that LeMay, he's going to be sidelined two to three weeks. And so that's going to be until after the trade deadline. Um, so I just wanted to put uh, – I just wanted to plant a seed in your guys' head, um, see what you think. Um, Jose Iglesias, he's under – he would be under team control until 2021. I mean – Baltimore looks good, but who knows if they're going to sell. And remember when the Yankees made that move to get Hetcheverria a couple of years ago? Um, I think it was 2018 because of Andujar's awful defense. So, yeah, Torres hasn't looked too great at short. So I have a proposal. 
trade for Iglesias and So I will do this now. Um because of the expanded playoffs, the division race doesn't really matter and the regular season doesn't really matter. So only bring trade proposals if the guy is going Oh my God. What the hell? Oh, is that you? Yeah. Only bring trade proposals if the guy that you're saying the Yankees are going to get is going to be on the playoff roster. Right. Otherwise, they're not going to do it, in my opinion. I think this is a part of that caller's argument, is saying that what we've said with Glaber's defense is that could there be a role for an Echeverria type? I don't think so. I mean, benching Glaber, because you're not going to bench Urshela. He's very good with the glove. I mean, do you see the Yankees could get to a point where Glaber is getting defensively subbed out? No. Okay. And if they do, it'd be for weight. Okay. Sorry, that's kind of... They're not going to lose assets for a five-game defensive replacement in a shortened season. That's my take on it. Yeah. Like, do they even have rule five guys that they need to dump? Otherwise, they're might get taken for free. Like, is that how is that? I mean, effective? I'm assuming there will be a rule five draft. But those guys haven't even played. So, like, can you trade them? And that's, that's what it is. And that's what we don't know. I mean, a few of the trades that have been done this year have been for uh, players to be named later, which yeah. we found out there's a six month limit on that, I believe. Yeah. So, you could. There's a world where it happens again. I don't know. I do I do like the fact that you came in with some information there. Like Echeverria, that was a good reference point. There's a concept, but it doesn't seem to make I, a lot of sense. I didn't hate that call. Yeah. It was um, the only trade proposal we've gotten a call about that wasn't, will a team give us their best player for the guys sure. we don't want? I like right. that you're digging deep on the thought process. If it was a 162-game season, I think that's a fine call. Okay. And there was like a playoff race. They're not going to trade for guys just to help finish the pennant race. I, I'd say the spin there would be players that would get used in playoff games. Like, Echeverria got used. Etch was a defensive sub player for us. So, I think that was Anduhar the base of the question. Andujar was a third baseman. Right. Andujar was a third baseman. I, there were was, t- uh, I think uh, there was referencing Glaber at short. So, I, yeah, like, I like the I, reach. I, I, like, I, I like it, but I'm just saying that was a dire need. Yeah. Andujar was the worst third baseman in all of baseball going into the playoffs. Like, it was a big time dire need. So, not a bad if it's 162 idea. Iglesias just went to the IL, so. Tough. Maybe that helps. Hey, guys. Matt from Jersey here. Um, Look, I'm watching the Yankees Braves uh, Wednesday night, probably five days before this airs. But, look, why the fuck is Avila on it? I mean, we saw this in Tampa in a close game, I believe. Last night I saw him warming in a close game. Is there something in his underlying peripherals or analytics they see and they want to really develop him? Why do they keep going to this guy? He's terrible. He almost just gave up a homer over the foul pole. I just want an explanation of what Boone's thinking here. Uh, Thanks, guys. Matt, thanks for the call. Your Avalon shocked us as well. Um, there's nothing in his peripheral, peripherals, mm. peripherals, feels, peripherals, 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 peripherals. There's nothing in the peripherals that are standing out. It's the results yeah. that are, that are standing out. Luis Avalon has appeared in nine games. He's got seven scoreless outings. So it's been good. He's been good. Also. They're not developing Avalon. Dude's 30 years old in his 10th or 9th season in the bigs. And, you know, he's got one, two. How many good seasons does he have, Jake? One, A lot. two, three, four, five. All but two. Like, like, yeah, like, he's got a lot of good seasons. So, um, it, it took us by surprise. It took us a little bit to realize, oh, Avalon's been a good reliever for near a decade, and the Yankees realized that, and he's been a good reliever for the Yankees thus far. took us a little yeah. bit, uh, Matt, to understand it, but I, I get it now. I mean, dude's been good. I promise people 
on the last episode because BBD was first on this. I think we all just saw Avalon come on the team and was like, oh, he's he's a major league guy, sure. Uh, a th- three two five career ERA, and I told Big Baby David that I would get the tweet lined up for him because he's been dancing all around it. He's right there. He's looking at it. It's staring him in the face because uh, he was – the only team he's ever been bad on is the Mets, which we've seen happen to a lot of relievers, um, an odd amount of relievers. BBD, here's the tweet. In Luis Avalon's career, on every team not the Mets, he has a 307 ERA. A 307, almost a 2. When he was on the Mets, he has a 506 ERA. That's the tweet. There you go. Did you tweet it? And it's not like it's a it's not a two and a half year sample. Nine years in the league. Yeah, I understand that. You know, I understand people that are just really because I didn't. We, we we didn't know either. We didn't yeah. know either. I didn't know anything about him. I saw the the last year. You know, non roster invitee, not a non intimidating lefty. He's been good for the Yanks. Seven out of nine appearances have been scoreless. So, I mean, there are some inherited runners, right, BBD? Yeah, I don't know the exact number on it, but okay. he's let a couple of heritage runners score, to be fair. All right. ERA is not everything, especially when it comes to relievers. Yeah, relievers um, in a small sample, it's not the best. Judge, yeah, it, but it doesn't work, but I mean, you know, like. Nine year career. Very different. It works pitchers, when it's good, very it doesn't work stuff. when it's bad. Yeah, I mean, Adam Adovino, who pitched in Colorado a lot of years, obviously a very different pitcher at this point of his career. 487 career innings, a 3 4 ERA. I mean, Luis Avalon has a three-two-five career. Yeah, not bad. Crazy numbers versus lefties. So, he's part of the team. He snuck up on us, but enjoy it. It's not like he's coming in. It's not eighth inning, two outs, and it's Avalon versus Big Poppy. Like, yeah, let's actually see. Um, even if it was, that'd be a pretty good matchup. For bottom him. eight, down six. You're not going to be upset about that. Bottom seventh, uh, uh, up by four. No one cares. Tied in the third, <laughs> up by three. Don't care. <laughs> Good spot. Top of the eighth, up by four. Don't care. Bottom of the third in a tie game. Ooh. Bottom of the fourth in a tie game. Uh, top of the eighth, up four. So you're getting trickier there, but top of the seventh, up five. Yeah, man. There's no reason to be upset with how they're using Avalon at all, really. Also, small sample, of course. He has a 196 ERA plus so far this year. Eight yeah. innings, small sample. Yeah, yeah. He's been nice. Yeah. He's been really nice. Yeah. Quality arm. Enjoy All right. it. Next. Nobody caught who I was until I put on the mask. Clint Frazier, the masked man. My question is for John Boy and Jake and BBD. Feel free to pile on here. Uh, is Clint Frazier still, and I quote, our seventh best outfielder. I'll hang up a listen. Yeah, did he pass Gardner? Maybe. As of right, mm. Stanton, Judge, Hicks, Talkman. So he might have jumped to fifth. I think fifth. you might have had Anduhar in there. Okay, but He's a better Anduhar. Pass Anduhar easily, yeah. easily. And it depends what you need. I mean, is it? The seventh inning and you got a lead? Because I'd rather have Guardy out there. Oh, I mean, that's... The whole team would. The whole... Everyone would. So, so yeah. Uh, okay, jump up from seventh to... Th- Dude, he looks great. He looks yeah. great. I'm not going to knock his performance. Um, but how they handled him made sense so far this season. Yeah. So he's And he's getting his opportunity and he's thriving. And I, are- I really wonder if they're taking calls on him. Because we know how hard they tried to move him at the deadline last year. I wonder if they're... Ringing up. Interesting to see. Uh, again, the the bat has always seemed right, and it seems like he's even taken another step to grow that tool. Such a small sample this year, but the bat speed is there. He, he changed his stance to add a little more power, it looks like. And, hey, if he could catch a fly ball, you know, it, I wouldn't say we were leading the train, but, you know, I've, I've said over a, if he played 140 games, that's a 30-home run player. Yeah, he's just got to catch fly balls, and will he get that opportunity with the Yankees? Who knows what next year has in store? Um, 
And if he gets it on another team, like that, that's a guy I'm adding him in fantasy, man. He's a good ball player. Yeah. Speaking of fantasy, Ooh. let me tell you about DraftKings because they're sponsoring this next call. And there are 100 million reasons why you should sign up. 100 million reasons? 100 million reasons. DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports, is celebrating the return of sports by giving away up to $100 million in prizes to all of their customers, including one lucky winner, who will take home a $1 million cash prize to claim your share of up to $100 million in instant giveaways. Ooh. All you need to do is download the app and sign up using promo code JOMBOY, J-O-M-B-O-Y. Then enter DraftKings' free football survivor pool. Survivor pool. Will they survive? Yes, it's really that easy to claim your share of up to $100 million in instant giveaways and put yourself in the running to win a $100 million cash prize. While the top prize is reserved for one lucky winner, everyone who signs up and enters... DraftKings Free Football Survivor Pool will receive an instant bonus prize of at least $5 in value upon entering. And while you're in the app, yeah. don't forget to check out all of the great daily fantasy contests DraftKings is hosting for the next week's basketball and golf action as well. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code JOMBOY to claim your share of $100 million in instant giveaways and put yourself in the runnings for $1 million cash prize by the house your parents always wanted when you win. Pay off their mortgage. That's promo code John Boy to get your share of $100 million in prizes only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Next voicemail. What's up, boys? It's Max from the Bug Crew calling in to ask where Jimmy went to train school. First two starts of uh, Paxton season, Jimmy was, uh, I'd say he was driving the Paxton train. Garbage. Third start, Jimmy had no confidence, jumped off that train after it careened into a mountainside. Paxton was beautiful. Hap, he was certainly on board the Hap train the first time round. Awful. Second time, he was driving even worse. Now we're watching his third start of the year, and he just pitched a gem. So, uh, Jimmy, going to need your train driver's license back. Go Yanks. I mean, shots fired at the train school I went to. I'm not even going to disclose their name. I was going to... Well, oh, why would I give away the name? On. I went. I'm proud graduate of school, and they're just gonna trash it like that. Beep school. Yeah, uh, I was driving the train game one. Yeah, I kicked Jake off against the Orioles. After that, I'd never been on the train. I'm still not on the train. No, you're not allowed on the train. We don't want you on the train. Because as a train school ga- graduate, I know a faulty train when I see one. Yeah. Although I do like if Pat's, if uh, Hap's got a little piss and vinegar in him. Why'd you skip me? It's a nice start by Hap last time. No, he looked good. He looked whippy. And I got all those Devo clips. Whip it good. Yeah. So I'm excited to use those. Whippy. I think I put them into the. Who would his next start be against? Did we do this? Did, we did not. It's the Rays and then the Mets. The Mets. Interested. Well, that game doesn't matter, so start them. Shut them out. Nine innings. Correct. It's pretty good, right? Whippy. All right, um, Jake's driving the Hap train. Yeah, and again, I'm trying to rebuild the Hap train. You know it's in shambles. It's missing pieces. It's on a track. Ah, uh, sidetrack. We're trying to figure out if it's operational. The caboose has caught fire. Mets would be a hell of a test if if that team can do anything. I mean, they've got a nice lineup. Uh, so we'll see if Hap gets to start there. I, th- I think they're lining him up for that. So, yeah, it, it's a start. Again, I really do think that Baltimore matchup was a bad matchup for him, and I've ended up looking decent on that. Baltimore can hit, especially against lefties. Philly, he was lost. I mean, Jay Hap walked six guys. 
J yeah. Hap. So uh, again, a, a three scared. strikeout, two walk start against the Red Sox, who we four games swept, isn't nothing to get the train back on. But if he were to throw another five point two one earned run against the Mets, you know the train starts moving forward, but could derail so easily. Yeah. I'm off of it. So maybe this, according to this caller, Hap's going to be great. Yeah, like, that's, I, maybe that's what happened. <clears throat> I'll stay mushing. Don't make me bring up those September stats last year. I stay mushing. September Hap. I'm going to stay mushing. September Hap. Can we talk about Stan for a second, please? Can we talk about they call me Mr. Glass Stanton and about how he gets injured, how he's wasted $60 million, probably more of the New York Yankees' money, uh, I mean, can we talk about this? I feel like the New York media ain't talking about this at, at all. And I feel like they're giving him a free pass. This guy is too busy bench pressing Adrian Lehman and walking off the field to the national anthem rather than playing the ball. He takes a slide and I cringe my face. I mean, really, can we just, can we just harp on him for a second and tell him what a bad signing he was? Cause I feel like everybody and their mother doesn't talk about this. They kind of just sweep it under the rug. Can we? I mean, can we have some balls here? Jimmy, Jake, it's Joe from New Jersey. Second time, long time. Got a quick question for you guys. As you guys have grown in popularity, have you made an effort to kind of censor what you say? I know it's easy for you guys to keep math off the podcast, but I'm talking more like politics, current events, kind of what's going on in the world. Uh, so let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. Go Yanks. It's an interesting question. Uh, thank you to both callers. The... Uh... Yeah, Stanton gets no media attention. Um, I'm going to combine the two. Okay. Because uh, our second caller asking us about, you know, what it's like to grow and stuff like that. You know, you get the first voicemail, and that's a sign we're growing. That's a good New York voicemail right there. Yeah. Um, that guy meant to call Francesa. Yeah. Could have been Francesa. Uh, second guy, fairly easy to not talk politics because I like what I, <clears throat> hate him. Yeah, Adam Sandler went on like the Adam Sandler went on the actor studio or that the green room where they sit around, you know, or it was like De Niro, Shia LaBeouf, Sandler, Green, all these people, and they asked him like, "How come you don't do it?" And Sandler was like. Man, like, I, I don't have an authority on that. I listen to people, and I say, oh, that sounds good. And then yeah. I listen to someone else, and they, oh, that sounded pretty good, too. And then, they're like, I'm constantly making up my own decisions. I'm in no position. I don't have confirmed solid thoughts on anything. Right. I hate politics. I think, um, see, like, this is going to sound political, but it's not. Uh -oh. It doesn't matter who the president is. Uh, Jake watched me listen to Trump talk for the first time ever a week ago <laughs> i've just never i yeah. have him muted i have i have both sides both parties just muted on my all my timelines and right. i don't tune into any of that not into it yeah it's not cool i mean it it i th think the part that sucked is i can't even you can't make jokes about it anymore like there was a day when you know the saturday night live i grew up with like i mean and the Al Gore jokes were really good. The George Bush, I mean, Will Ferrell as George Bush were really silly. And it just sucks that it's hit that point because, like, you know, there was a time I used to, I had an okay Trump impression. Like, that was one of the impressions I could actually talk in that voice and roll with. And then I did a couple silly videos and people were like, oh, dude, you got him. It's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to get anyone. So. Uh, and again, if if that's what comes with, if that's one of the perils for being allowed to to, I, I save those conversations with my mom to talk baseball as a job, then I I can do that. <clears throat> I thought he was talking about censoring herself, talking like shit about players and stuff, which is a whole nother element. And I was reading up on that, and it's like, well, we're not trying to be like hard pressing journalists. We're trying to build relationships so that we can get some inside info and bring you guys the stuff that we learned. So, you know, I think uh, Heyman's a target. You just, you have to be real. Like I, Boyd you know, and Burt Smith probably don't like us, and that's about it. Clint, you know, who's a lightning rod in general and who we've been tough on at times in this show, and we know 
people in the Yankees org have been tough on because they've had to be. Like, if if he continues to rake this year and say he sticks and right, he's catching fly balls, you know, if we caught up with him, uh, I think you just have to address it on the nose and say, like, you know, you were struggling catching fly balls for a little bit there. I don't think Clint would deny that if he started – if he was looking good in right field this year, you know? Yeah, hi, Clint. He he struggled. And, I, you know, athletes are normally the first to do that. So we'd probably, only... we'd probably take a silly way to get there. It is a little messed up that the only player that we know probably has listened to episodes of this is the one we trash the most. But they find their way. I think people, people like themselves more than they lead on. Um, so... We'll see. We know Cashman's listening. Thank you. I censored my train school, so that's censoring what we said. Yeah. Looking out for them. I mean, Greg Bird was nice to us, so we probably didn't throw him under a bus earlier. Yeah. You know. Cool. So that's that. What's happening, Jimmy, Jake, BBD, Max Manus calling in. So as a somewhat related follow-up to uh, Jimmy's Jewish wedding question that he answered for me last week, uh, I have a question for you guys to help me figure out a bit of a dilemma I'm going through. So I leave next week for a year abroad in Israel where it's a seven-hour time difference. So Yankees games are from 2 to 5 a.m. when it's a 7 p.m. game. I'm wondering if you guys think the best course of action for this, if you were in that position, would you wake up at 2 a.m. to watch it live and live tweet and all that fun stuff? Would you wait until the next day, not check the score, watch it three hours in its entirety during the afternoon? Would you watch a 20-minute recap in the morning? Would you just check the score when you wake up and be done with it? What do you guys think? All right, thanks so much. Thank you, Max, for calling. <clears throat> Our sales guy asked my underwear size, so I didn't hear the beginning. What? Why, are, why can't we watch it live? You're forced to move to somewhere in Europe. He's leaving for a year abroad next week. In he's going to Israel. Seven hour time difference. Games are from two to five a.m. So how how should he be trying to watch games? I think that's like the like that's the one time zone where that is really hard. Yeah. Um. I I think okay. I'll give I'll give Jake starter pack. You got to find. And again, this year is pretty tough because it's not like there's West Coast games or anything else. You got to find all of the afternoon games and be like, hey, I'm watching these. Because you just went from, I think it was 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. So if you go to 7 to 1, that's minus 6, math pod. 2 a.m., minus 2, that gets you to midnight, minus 4. So, I mean, those are 8 p.m. games. So any 1 p.m. game you're watching. Any 4 p.m. game that takes you to 11, you're going to try to do those if you can. I have how I, how I want to do it. And then you have a couple tipsy nights where you I, just stay and go for it. I can't, I can't watch baseball not live. Like, right. You know, like some people, like I got to, like when I worked weddings, they were like, tape it and then watch it when you get home. I was like, absolutely not. No. I'll check my phone halfway through. I'm not going to not. Max, here's what you need to do you need to have a loved one, mom or dad. Or a best friend who's a good fan, uh, who's a, who's a big fan, text you the inning at which you should start watching each morning. So you wake up and you say, "Watch from the sixth on," and that way you can skip anything you don't need to know, and you can just read the box score, get yourself, and then when the big change is, and you're like, "Okay, I'll start here," because I wouldn't be able to just watch a game from the beginning when the fast forward option is there. Right, I would. Skip to try and see the score. Like, when's it get close? Is it, when, yeah. uh, you know, if it's six nothing after two, I'm checking the box score and seeing right. do I need to keep watching this? What happens? Uh, so that's a really tough task, Max. That's the worst possible hours you can have for that. Yeah, I think you do some recaps. I think you have a you make your watch days and you make your not watch days, and you just okay. I'm gonna watch a recap of this game. I can't really watch it, and then you 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 eat the bug a couple of days. I think. Katie Sharp did this, wasn't she in Bahrain? Bahrain. Uh, so she'd be the one to ask. Tweet at Katie Sharp, because we always tweet at Katie Sharp. Always. What's up, boys? It's Nate from Western Mass. 
Uh, last episode, Jimmy said that he wanted to end the episode with a wedding question. So, I'm thinking alternative universe, Jimmy and Jake are wedding crashers. Jimmy or Owen Wilson, uh, Jake, Vince Vaughn, clearly. Um, so, all of the current Yankees are getting married on the same day, and you guys have to pick one guy to crash his wedding. Who is it and why? I'd love to hear your, your thoughts. Uh, thanks, guys. Go Yanks. This is interesting because I'm a wallflower at weddings, and you're um, a bellflower, an uh, active flower. You're the growing flower in the middle. It's, uh, I mean, the, so I was going to say why, why Vince Vaughn, but the one, the, the couple lines about dancing yeah. are pretty good. Yeah. I saw you dance out there. Yeah. He starts kicking them under the table. Um, interesting. So I'm, I'm going, uh, like, a, like, Tanaka's wedding, marrying right. a pop star. I'd love to be a wallflower. Like, I mean, that was basically my job. I was a videographer. Right. That's basically a wallflower. You just film everything interesting that's happening. So uh, that adds up why I did that job, I guess. Mm. Uh, why I was good at it. So I'll do Tanaka's wedding, I think. I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that. CeCe's was probably awesome just because of the star power of the guests. Oh, yeah. That came through. And then Canely, because you have some... Ooh. You have some upstate New York yeah. loud people. Like, you don't want to be there for the last two hours of Tommy Canley's wedding. No. You do not. I fly, don't think you want to I don't think you, yeah, you want to be there for the first three hours. No, I do. I want to see. I want to be the videographer and see, like, Tommy in the room with his boys. You're attending this wedding. No, I'm a videographer. You're attending this no, wedding. No, it was an alternate universe. No, 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 no. Your no. own Wilson. You can't. You've attended weddings because I think too. Canely would be emotional with the with the mother dance and okay. the speeches and all that. But once the drinking and partying stops, I leave. That's like when I leave weddings anyway. Okay. I've seen you attend some weddings. That's a fun fact about me. Yes. How many weddings do you think you've seen me attend? Two. <sighs> Three. Schwartz, Proach, Sam, Sam. That's all. Listen, one. Good. Uh, yeah, I mean, initially off the top of my head, I jump to some of the Latin guys. Um, we're dancing. Geo always pops up. We're connected kind of spiritually. Chapman just to see the swag. Same birthday. Oh, Chapman's white wedding. white suits. Holy smokes. Makes his bride wear black. That would be wild. Um, I think Paxton's gets pretty weird pretty quick. Like, there's a moment at Paxton's wedding, you're like, oh, this is real. They do this. This is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Into that. Um, boy, it was probably a good time. 40, that feels like a good Jersey guy wedding. Yeah. Chad Green. Probably a nice wedding. Geese everywhere. Uh, the twins thing, you know. Geese and twins everywhere. You hit a point in the wedding, you don't know who's a twin, what's a goose. Chad had a nice wedding. Oh, for sure. Did we find pictures of that? Did BBD just die? Chad Green He's wedding. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we'll leave that. Um, yeah. Look at look. I like I like Chad's. I think we've seen pictures, right? Yeah, I like Chad's suit. Jenna looks gorgeous, of course. Look at that. What is this? It's a doodle, right? Yeah. Good Chad. Nice. Looks great. Ooh, is that gray? Yeah, I like his suit. Gray tux? It's a good looking suit. Is there a doodle there? What is this really website nice. we're on? Tyler Wade. Oh, uh, this is one of those creepy websites? I can't go to Tyler's. I mean, that would be... No, no. You don't want to deal with that the whole time. Unless he needs a ring bearer. Tyler! Why aren't you in your tux? No. Nona. It's me, Jake. She doesn't know you. No, you'd, you'd, it'd be more like, no, no, no. He wouldn't know her. I know her. I'm not. You you've think studied, I'm at the wedding. You've studied the for photo a period album. of time. You've studied the photo and album. And I don't know who Nona you've is. You've studied the photo album, obviously. I forgot. You know, all of Tyler's friends say I look like him. I don't say that. 
Get away from me. Tyler's much taller. He's in. He's healthy. He's slimmer and taller. You don't look healthy. He doesn't smell like you. <laughs> doesn't <laughs> smell like me. <laughs> no, nah, he bathes in uh, hairspray and sham- shampoo and and uh, cologne. Booney probably had a fun wedding, huh? Mm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably had a really fun wedding. Cool. Okay. That ends the show. That was the last Ooh, voicemail. Gary's. Gary's might be the if there was one the biggest overlap wedding for us. You can wallflower a little bit. The yeah. partying kicks in pretty good. Worried about Gary's older brother. Sure. You know. Older brother. Yeah, older brother. He might kick my ass. Thank you. For the voicemails. Yeah, thank you as always. We'll be back tomorrow with Sharp Stats. Thank you very much. Enjoy the games. Thank you very much. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.